But we begin tonight with the crisis of American democracy on the world stage. Now, if you're in New York, you may have noticed the traffic jams and street closures, the type of gridlock that can only mean the United Nations General Assembly has kicked off in the city. World leaders have arrived, raising the alarm on the world's most pressing issues, war, coup d'etat, the climate crisis, just to name a few. It's one of those days when you realize what leading, what presidenting actually involves, and how the role, when done correctly, means calling for unity over crises like Russia and Ukraine. With Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky addressing fellow world leaders in his first in-person visit since the invasion of his country began. It also means the tense navigation of foreign policy, where lives are at stake. Ahead of today's remarks by the Iranian president, Iran and the U.S., longtime antagonists, struck a rare deal. Five Americans detained in Iran are now free and made their emotional return to U.S. soil early this morning. The release was part of a prisoner exchange agreement that will grant Tehran access to oil revenues previously frozen by U.S. sanctions. Leaders, including President Biden, also issued dire warnings about climate change. We see it everywhere. Record-breaking heat waves in the United States and China. Wildfires ravaging North America and Southern Europe. A fifth year of drought in the Horn of Africa. Tragic, tragic flooding in Libya. My heart goes out to the people of Libya. That's killed thousands, thousands of people. The U.N. is gathering as the city of Derna in eastern Libya is still counting its dead after devastating floods struck more than a week ago. Experts say the storm was more likely to occur and more intense because of human-caused climate change. The World Health Organization and the U.N. say 4,000 deaths have so far been reported. These are crises that are urgent, hard to resolve, and which impact literally the entire world. And yet, Republicans and MAGA world continue to trivialize them. Climate change? A hoax. Bringing detained Americans home? Slammed by a twice-impeached former president who did nothing to free them during his time in office and whose Iran policy was an abject failure. Allocating aid to fight Putin? Nah, let's just focus on a bogus plot to impeach Biden. It's all part of their more nefarious plot to dismantle democracy, a crisis that Biden challenged on the world stage. Will we find within ourselves the courage to do what must be done, to preserve the planet, to protect human dignity, to provide opportunity for people everywhere? and to defend the tenets of the United Nations. There can only be one answer to that question. We must and we will. These are big presidential priorities, epic, historic. And it helps to have an adult in the room. It is a timely reminder that a president is not someone who entertains you on TV. The threat to our democracy at home remains serious. But as Tom Nichols writes in The Atlantic, Americans are sleepwalking through this national emergency. And that includes Democrats and the media. He says, quote, Democrats and their liberal allies claim to be in full mobilization mode to stop Trump and defang his threat to the constitutional order. But are they? How much more hand-wringing will they do over Biden's age, over whether he's doing enough for climate change or to forgive student loans? How many more times will Trump's opponents in the pro-democracy coalition internalize the right's criticisms about inflation, about spending, about gasoline, and respond to them as if Republicans care one whit about policy. Because, of course, they don't. The modern-day Republican Party has only one principle left, to be reelected by any means necessary so that they hold on to power, which is exactly why President Biden sounded the alarm, once again, on our biggest crisis yet, saying in a fundraiser last night, quote, in 2024, democracy is on the ballot once again. And let there be no question... Donald Trump and his MAGA Republicans are determined to destroy American democracy. And I will always defend, protect, and fight for our democracy. That is why I'm running. Biden has improved America's standing in the world, but Donald Trump is threatening to blow it all up all, all over again. Joining me now is David Rothkopf, columnist for The Daily Beast and host of the Deep State Radio podcast. And Tara Setmeyer, senior advisor to the Lincoln Project and former Republican communications director. Thank you both for being here. David, I want to read a little bit more 
of this Tom Nichols uh, piece, which I think was quite good um, today. And he writes the following in The Atlantic. America is in a state of emergency, yet few of its citizens seem to realize it. For example, a single senator, Tommy Tuberville of Atlanta, has been holding up hundreds of military promotions for months, endangering the national security of the United States. The acting chief of naval operations says it will take years for the Navy to recover from the damage. Welcome news, no doubt, in Beijing. Few people outside of America's senior military leadership seem particularly concerned. Um, what do you make of the state of our democracy as it stands on the world stage and Biden's representation and defense of it? Well, I think the world knows that democracy in the United States is in a more fragile state um, than it has been in any of our lifetimes, so that Donald Trump uh, and the people around Donald Trump represent um, that threat, uh, and they could return to power. Having said that, they also know who Joe Biden is. Joe Biden ran about defending democracy. When he speaks in private to Democratic donors, he speaks of defending democracy. When he gets on the world stage, he talks about defending democracy. He takes steps to defend democracy against Trump's friends like Vladimir Putin uh, in Ukraine. Uh, he has done everything that you can imagine from an American president who understands the job and understands the stakes in order to protect democracy. And I think the reason he's running again is because he realizes that he and Kamala Harris represent the last best hope of the United States to defeat the Trump forces, to defeat the authoritarian forces in the United States, and to preserve our democracy. And I don't think that's an overstatement. You know, um, Tara, you know, Tom Nichols was, you know, pretty critical of the media for a lot of reasons, which I think has not learned at all how to cover Trump. I think full stop. The media writ large is still covering him the same way they did in 2016 and 2020. Mm -hmm. um, but also of Democrats who and look, the issues that Democrats are in complaint of the Biden administration about are important. Student loan debt, uh, you know, relief would, would change millions of American lives. Um, you know, he's doing a lot on climate, but also gave Joe Manchin a lot. Those are legitimate complaints. But I think Tom Nichols' point is that arguing about that and about Biden's age and, like, nitpicking that right now, when on the other side is Trump and DeSantis and people like Ramaswamy, seems short-sighted. Um, what do you make of that criticism? Uh, my good friend Tom Nichols is 100 percent correct about this. You know, we joke, I joke all the time with my Democratic friends and say, uh, you know, Republicans fall in line, Democrats need to fall in love. That's that's the joke, you know, amongst us in Washington about this. And I just sit back and I go, what are you guys doing? None of these policy positions matter if our democracy falls apart. And I don't think that the case has been made enough comparing and contrasting what that means. I don't think people really truly understand what we're facing here, what the existential threat to our democracy looks like. Democracy is a decision. Democracy does not defend itself. Institutions do not defend themselves. It takes the righteous anger of the American people to stand up and push back against the authoritarian forces that are now coalesced behind one major political party in this country. This next election, President Biden was 100 percent correct. It is about democracy. It's America or Trumpism, period, full stop. I just came back from a conference in Germany, and I can tell you that there were a lot of high-powered folks there, from elected officials to business leaders, who looked at us Americans who were there and said, you guys cannot fail. There is no one else to replace you in America as the beacons of democracy in the world. Europe and the rest of the world cannot survive if American democracy falls. It was a, it was a very sobering experience to hear our European allies plead to us, saying, what are you guys doing there? We need you. Who fills that power vacuum? It sure as hell isn't a pro-democracy country. It's Russia. It's China. It's our enemies who would fill that vacuum if America went under. So for President Biden to step up, which I think he's doing an excellent job of doing, to step up and explain that that's what's on the ballot, I think that the Democrats need to understand this and coalesce around that message and explain to the American people what it means if we lose our democracy. Lincoln Project has put out all week long, we're putting out pro-Biden, pro-democracy messaging to remind people this is what's at stake, this is what he's doing, and this is the choice. And that's what the messaging has to be moving forward.